Edzo Eddie Olchek was one of the first on the broadcast to notice that there might be an issue with the finish of the Kentucky Derby. So Edzo, what exactly did you see that gave you a little uh, pause for concern? Well, Ahmed, good to be with you. Uh, look, uh, watching as many races as I have in my, in my lifetime, when I saw maximum security come off the rail, and horses need to run on a so-called straight line, they could cut off, they could cut in front of another horse, but you can't cut off another horse if they're right in that path. So I kind of compare it to somebody running track. You know how you have the four or five lines, and we're going to break it down for everybody to actually give them a visual. Maximum Security, the leader of the Kentucky Derby, was running in like that one or one and a half path. He was fine. He was clear. He could come over in that three or four or five path as long as he doesn't impede the progress of anybody else. But what I saw was him veering out for whatever reason, whether it was human or horse. And look where he ends up going. He goes all the way to the four path, impedes the progress of War of Will, bumping long range toddy. Uh, also, uh, the eventual winner, Country House. And look, all we could do, and I think our team at NBC, Ahmed, did an amazing job of talking about the information that we had. The only claim of foul that we were aware of was 20 against 7, Country House against Maximum Security. We did not know until late into the evening that the jockey John Court of Long Range Toddy also claimed foul. So if we would have known that, then all of a sudden the spectrum would have opened up a little bit more and have the understanding that, look, there's something seriously going on. Two last things, Ahmed. One is, is that in that situation, when you see a horse come over like that, does it determine, and that's how the stewards end up trying to figure it out, does it determine and does it have an impact on the finish of the race? And to me, there was no doubt when I saw the leading horse maximum security come out and impede the progress of some other horses that have that momentum, uh, it was going to cost somebody a placing. And then the second thing is, is that, look, uh, Louis Sai as the jockey of maximum security did everything that he could to get the horse back online and then eventually worked himself back into that one and a half pass. So again, I, I do it. Uh, I, the analogy is track and field. You got to stay in your lane. You can certainly move out if you want, but if somebody has that position, uh, you can't go ahead and cut them off. And we were very lucky, Ahmed, that no horse went down or any jockey went down because it was that close for something like that happening. Yeah, a hundred percent, Edzo. Still, we've never seen anything like this in the Kentucky Derby before. A horse right. has never been disqualified because of what we saw. So ultimately, safety was a big uh, issue involved. It was, certainly, we've seen it with Santa Anita. What has happened there? The stewards may have had that in their mind. Do you think ultimately this is a call that was, while difficult, it was the correct call for the stewards to make? One thousand percent. Yeah. Does it, it, it to me whether it was a Thursday afternoon at Churchill Downs or the biggest race on our calendar year? Uh, these type of things happen, and uh, the right call was made. And I give the stewards a lot of credit for making the right call because easily, Ahmed, they could have just said, you know what. This is race riding. Look, race riding and intimidation are, have always been a part of horse racing, and that's what's made so many jockeys uh, so great over the years, the intimidation part of saying, look, you want to go ahead and come on the outside of me? I'm going to take that area away from you right away. But it just got uh, obviously very scary, and uh, there's no doubt in my mind that they got the call right at the end of the day. And look, for the people that had the seven maximum security, I've been there. Uh, but that's just horse racing, and uh, you got to live to fight another day, and people will get an opportunity to bet another big race, uh, another big race coming up uh, in Baltimore at the Preakness. Yeah, 100%. You bring up the betting angle here, and that certainly is some of it. If you had Country House, maybe you're yeah. okay with the ruling. If you had Maximum Security, maybe you have a little bit more disagreement with it. As far as the confidence of the betting community, when you see something like this, a disqualification in the Kentucky Derby, does that gain the respect and the confidence of the betting community, or are there now more questions than we had just a couple of days ago look it's it's like anything else uh consistency that's what you want uh regardless if it's the biggest race on our calendar year or it's a a five claimer on a thursday afternoon it, it really that, that's what you're looking for but again it's like referees in sports the national football league the national hockey league you have different guys that interpret rules and see things a little bit differently. Oh, that, that's, you know, I'm not going to call that because that's petty. Or you have somebody that calls it in the first quarter or in overtime. And, and that's what makes, I, I think, it very interesting because somebody's opinion in Kentucky for horse racing may be way different than somebody's in California trying to make a ruling like that. So, again, I, 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 
the consistency is the biggest thing, uh, but I give them a lot of credit. Like I said, I, I believe they got it right, and uh, you just hope that it will be continued to be uh, so-called refereed like that uh, moving forward up and down uh, horse racing uh, across the country. Our own Eddie Olchik on top of it from the start. Thanks, Edzo. Okay, Ahmed, thank you.